this is Dr. Dawn Sears, Gut Girl MD, and I'm coming to you with one of my friends, Dr. Adam Harrison. He has an interesting background. He's not only a physician, originally trained in the UK, also a lawyer and an executive coach who specializes in bullying. Whether you are the bullier or the bully E, he may be able to help you with his coaching practice. So thanks so much, Adam, for being with us tonight. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Dawn. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So we know the bully on the playground and we know that obnoxious surgeon who's throwing scalpels and yelling at people and calling people names. What is the middle ground where you actually see a lot of your clients? What kind of behaviors do you notice? Um, well, there's, there's, there's sort of really overt stuff, you know, the, um, you know, like the things that I've experienced and, and, and a lot of us have experienced as doctors. In fact, the statistics are quite frightening. Uh, it's a large portion of us, um, you know, where we've been um, balled out in, in front of our colleagues uh, on the ward or in front of patients or um, in theater, as you say, or instruments have been thrown. Certainly, I'm, I haven't had a scalpel fly in my direction, thankfully, but I've heard of it happening, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this was probably in the, in the early 2000s. Um, but yeah, I mean, the majority of it is, uh, you know, kind of shouting out, belittling, shaming, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of stems, I think, from those days of teaching by humiliation. Mm. We, you know, we um, presume it was the same in the, in the States, you know, if you mm -hmm. uh, at the bedside when you're a clinical student and if you got something wrong, then the, the dinosaur of a consultant or attending, as you, you guys call them, would have just barked at you and, and really shamed you in front right. of others. Um, and I think that's part of that, um, that bygone era, so somebody's mm -hmm. still sort of like lingering on. I mean, you know, I guess people of a certain generation have modeled themselves on that type of person. So mm -hmm. it's, it's being perpetuated and, and propagated still. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's, a, you know, also the, the more insidious stuff, you know, the sort of microaggressions and casual, casual discrimination and things like that that goes on. Uh, but it's equally important, you mm -hmm. know, and um, it may not have that kind of um, major psychological impact that someone, you know, shouting and screaming in your face does. Um, but, you know, I've heard it called death by a thousand cuts. So, right. you know, if you're regularly experiencing those sorts of, you know, casual racism or other microaggressions, misogyny and things, then mm -hmm. it will just get to you. And, and, you know, like with other forms of bullying, it will lead people to become very depressed and perhaps even suicidal so right right you know, and I, I mean I have thankfully haven't had suicidal doctors that I've worked with and you know it's not my forte anyway I would obviously uh, signpost them to an appropriate specialist mm -hmm. but you know I, I know I know it goes on a lot so right right so you mentioned misogyny and harassment based on gender uh, and race and maybe religion and other things. Yeah. What would you say is the, the often demographic that you're seeing for the bullier or the bully? Mm -hmm. Is there common themes that you see? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just going to look look off screen because I have some stats um, mm -hmm. that I, I pulled for you. Um, it's actually from an American website called the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, and they quoted a survey by the Workplace Bullying Institute from 2017, which stated that nearly three quarters of bullies in the workplace are men. Mm -hmm. um, and 60 percent of those male bullies target women. Mm -hmm. Um, and that of the female bullies, um, mm. over two thirds of them target other women. Mm. Mm. Wow, that is staggering. So yeah. there's gen definitely one gender that is being much more victimized here disproportionately yeah. Um, yeah, as absolutely. a whole. Wow. Absolutely. So in your coaching, how can you help a victim of bullying? What services can you provide and how can you help their mindset when they're trapped in that environment? Yeah, so, I mean, I think you have to do a, a sort of initial assessment to see whether uh, someone has, you know, predominantly psychological problems like quite, you know, fairly severe anxiety, depression, um, PTSD, and then 
I, I wouldn't say that people are really um, in the right frame of mind to be coached out of mm. those sorts of problems. You know, I think they need specialist mental health um, help with those mm -hmm. um, issues. I think um, things like stress, you know, fairly, fairly low level stress and low level anxiety can be helped with coaching. Mm -hmm. um, but also um, there's things like low self-esteem, low self-confidence, mm -hmm. frank imposter syndrome or imposter phenomenon, as I've heard it called recently. Mm -hmm. um, burnout, because obviously, you know, there's a, a lot of things that are contributing towards burnout in general before the pandemic mm -hmm. um but but now there's even even more and, and bullying is just one of those things that will contribute to that and then things like conflict aversion and um people lacking in assertiveness these are, are really things that that arise as sequelae of bullying mm -hmm. um that, that are all very coachable mm -hmm. um absolutely so what about if you're referred to coach the the bullier what what can you do there mm. Mm. well uh, a little caveat i haven't actually coached anyone who's been the the bully yet uh, okay. so it's a good opportunity um you know in preparing for this to have a good think about that actually uh -huh. and um I, th I think one of the key things is that there has to be a certain level of insight on the on the part of the bully um there has to be you know some kind of awareness that they are a bully admit admitting it to themselves initially um, mm -hmm. before they can then admit it to like their coach or mm -hmm. you know whatever other professional they're working with mm -hmm. um, and part of that is I you know I, I do a fair bit of work um, on emotional intelligence and growth mindset with clients and I think mm -hmm. you know when you look at um, Goldman's frameworks mm -hmm. on um, emotional intelligence in leadership those sort of five five areas there are there are definitely three of them that really jumped out to me that mm -hmm. could help um if you worked on those that could help mm -hmm. people who bully so self-awareness mm -hmm. so then being able to recognize and understand their emotions and be aware of the effect of those emotions on others mm -hmm. and then self-regulation which was essentially expressing their emotions appropriately right um and and for me a spin-off of, of that which is not one of goldman's um categories but self-control mm -hmm. so you know, not having emotional outbursts that are typically out of proportion to the situation, you yeah. know? Um, so I think a lot of bullying is rooted in insecurity, especially mm -hmm. when it comes from leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and when they're feeling insecure, because often they have low emotional intelligence, they mm -hmm. feel threatened. And then that, that triggers the whole, you know, amygdala is hijacked and, you know, the whole sympathetic nervous system fight or flight thing. So right. that, that's why I think they get angry mm -hmm. in, the, in the moment because they are insecure in their skills or knowledge or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they feel threatened by someone in their team who mm -hmm. may appear like they could be a better leader than them or, or do a project right. better than them or something like that and then that that's what kind of like leads to that I think mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so then the, the third um of Goldman's things I thought was particularly pertinent was basically just empathy you know mm -hmm. so almost the, the reverse of self-awareness in a way so being able to recognize the emotional mm -hmm. states of others mm -hmm. and then respond to that on the basis of you know the data that's coming towards them there right. um but other than um, emotional intelligence work, I, th I think a lot of, as you said, about mindset stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that is so that's so vital. Um, you know, if you're if you're insecure, um, you know, where does that come from? Are the self-confidence issues are the other are self-esteem issues there? Mm -hmm. Are they being contributed to by unhelpful thoughts like the inner critic and you know, negative mind chatter and limiting beliefs and things like that? Mm -hmm. and, and mindset problems is there a an element of fixed mindset in mm -hmm. some of these um, types of people. And that is, you know, very fertile ground for a coach to work on, as you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do you think it's best to educate the, the group that's most vulnerable to this, the trainees, the medical students, those that are going through the, the training process, whether it's uh, in uh, New Zealand, in the UK or in the United States, what's the best way to get the word out of um, what's going on with bullying, what people can do about it, and what resources are available to them? Well, firstly, I think it is uh, it's a ubiquitous problem. Mm -hmm. You know, um, from what I've seen, we 
you know, as you know, we've been living in Australia for 18 months before we came mm-hmm. to New Zealand and mm-hmm. we hail from the UK and, you know, trained and worked in the UK system for like 19 years. I was a doctor in the UK before we moved away. Mm-hmm. And then my experience of working with American physicians is what's informing me about, mm-hmm. about what's going on there, you know, and, mm-hmm. and being in amazing groups with people like yourself, you know, learning mm-hmm. from yourselves and, and learning what's going on in the States. So I think it's, it is, it's just, horrendous everywhere really mm-hmm. um and you know the things that i went through were sort of 2005 2006 2008 2009 that, that kind of period mm-hmm. um I, I just don't see it having improved mm-hmm. at all um and I, and as, as i referred to before you know i think the, the pandemic has has sort yeah. of shone a light on it and almost mm-hmm kind of concentrated it you know there's the mm. other stresses that people are experiencing at work uh, mm. has lowered their threshold for being unkind and and uh, you know unsupportive and frankly horrible to, to their right. colleagues mm-hmm. um and the sad thing is there isn't there isn't a huge amount of help out there right. um you know there are there are a lot there's lots of kind of you know wellness and well-being stuff being done and you know you can approach your like for example in the uk um, you know, there are lots of webinars being put on about it by the unions like the British Medical Association. And I don't know if that kind of thing happens in, in the States as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Australia, there's um, things being put on by your, in, you know, your um, indemnity insurance companies and things like mm-hmm. that, because mm-hmm. obviously, you know, it's in, it's in their interest to mm-hmm. help doctors who are being bullied because that can lead to medical error and patient safety issues. So then Mm-hmm. you know it's more cost effective for them to to help mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know with the um not the root cause because they can't help prevent you from being bullied but they can help you deal with with it you know um but yeah I mean it's it's one of those things it's part of my mantra really that you know that you're not alone but unfortunately mm-hmm. um it's one of those subjects that you know it's so stigmatized still you know we feel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know you just feel like a uh, weak if you admit to being mm-hmm. bullied mm-hmm. um and you know i i um there was that article from um i'm sorry to, to talk uh, just about doctors um but there was an article in the uh, journal of the american medical association it was, it's pretty old but i think it's mm-hmm. probably still j- just as uh, just as relevant mm-hmm. it was from 1990 mm-hmm. and it said that about 46 percent of medical students in in one particular med school in the states had experienced and reported bullying Mm -hmm. and following that cohort through by the time they were attendings Mm -hmm. that figure had had risen to 80 percent wow staggering yeah so imagine if you are walking along the hospital corridor and you you pass 10 fellow attendings right it's possible that eight of them have also experienced bullying Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. but but opening that conversation up is really is really difficult it's really challenging um so i mean yes there are you know you know mental health services that people can can approach um Mm -hmm. and you know some of the medical organizations are putting on you know webinars and things i I myself was involved in um, delivering a webinar for um the practitioner health program in the uk um, Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. um but you know it's 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 hard to raise awareness, especially when <laughs> the organisations themselves won't admit there's a problem. This oh is the goodness. thing, yeah. you Absolutely. know, some of these high flying, you know, Ivy League organisations where it's just a, as much a problem as anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not going to they're not going to admit to it because they're not going to get people applying for their amazing mm. programs. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so well, in Australia, I believe one of the surgical programs was shut down for bullying for 18 months last year. Yeah, yes, so, yes. And you don't want to be the, on the front page of the Sydney whatever. <laughs> no, no, Morning Herald or whatever, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, I feel that in Australia, it's, it's particularly bad. And there are, mm-hmm. you know, other, other reasons for that. Um, sort of, I think there's some kind of financial issues around... Mm. why some doctors are more toxic than Mm. than others um so if we were gonna look at the perfect dream world five years from now 
what could we move 1%? What would it be if you were in control? Um, do you know what I think would, would really help? Um, it would be encouraging 1% more of doctors to speak, speak up about it, to um, ad admit that they're being bullied and, um, you know, seek um, refuge, if you like, in, mm -hmm. in, in the experience of others. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I'm, I mean, I think that would be so powerful, you know, even now I'm thinking in the, in the future of, um, you know, I would like to run group coaching sessions for people mm -hmm. who've experienced this problem, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, getting doctors to admit to it and, mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, speak about it in front of others, I think mm -hmm. is going to be pretty challenging until mm -hmm. we sort of remove mm -hmm. that stigma. But the only way of doing that, I think, is for more and more people to start speaking up about it Absolutely. and, you know, making, making the others realise that they're not alone, that it's very, very common, that they're not to blame you know um and i guess on the flip side it's could we get one percent more of bullies to admit to themselves that they're <laughs> that they're bullies you know uh, yeah um that, that would be interesting that would be mm, fascinating to see how we yeah. do that yeah so we'll need some sort of belly bullying quiz that everyone has to take once a year <laughs> to see what their score is on the bullying score to bring some well awareness. yeah you're right. Why not? I mean, you know, we have we have surveys and inventories and questionnaires for everything else, don't we? Resilience, we certainly burnout. Do. And, you know, so, you know, maybe you and I need to put our heads together and create a bullying inventory. That sounds good. Sounds <laughs> yeah. like a, we won't have a lot of clients chomping down the bit to get it, but we could, it could be, it could be a slow burner. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Those that are introspective. Yes, so um, yes. how can people reach out to work with you, Dr. Harrison? Oh, um, well, uh, my email address is uh, dr.adam at, at coachingmentoringdoctors.com. So it's a bit of a long email address. Um, and I have a Facebook page, which is at Coaching Mentoring Doctors. Um, and as you know, I now have a, a YouTube channel. Um, which Congratulations. Is, <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to you, uh, which is just Dr. Mm -hmm. Adam, um, physician coach. And I'm on LinkedIn uh, as Dr. Adam Harrison. I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, if you think Dr. Harrison can be a benefit to you, you've experienced bullying. And as he mentioned, 80% of us have. So um, don't feel like you're alone. Don't feel like you have to figure this out. You are a human. If you're a human physician anywhere on the planet, you've experienced this um, most likely. Um, you don't have to suffer alone. And it's really possible that working with a coach like Dr. Harrison could set you free from at least mental extra that's going on in your head. So thank you, Dr. Harrison, for spending some time with us today. Uh, not at all, my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. All right.